Hey y'all, happy March. This month I'm kicking it off with a double mega bang. First off, for all you podcast listeners, Fusion 360 has launched a podcast. It's called The New Possible, and you can find it on Spotify, Apple, Google, and Amazon, as well as the Fusion 360 blog. In it, we take a deep dive into the ins and outs of how companies unlock the new possible with Fusion 360. From ventilators to wristwatches to space, we explore the future of making in an authentic, relatable way. Tune in to Episode 1 with SF-based industrial design leaders, Fuse Project. You can find links in the description below. Now let's get into it. I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to a little something we've been developing over here. I call it the future, but its real name is Assembly Concurrency. So you know when you're in another platform and you're editing something, and boom, you see your colleague, friend, or little sibling in the same file, and you think, phew, glad Marty's knocking that out. Well, guess what? Fusion has that now. We call it assembly concurrency, and I have to be honest, it's a game changer if there ever was one. Think about it. You're under a deadline and need to make sure the project is tracking. Seeing who's in the product, what they're working on, and how it's going is one of the most efficient ways to stay aware. Previously, there wasn't a way to explicitly reserve a document, see what team members were working on, or keep in control of your complex assemblies and their milestones. But now, with assembly concurrency, you can reserve the space so you have control of what gets pushed. Imagine you're an engineering manager or senior designer and your team is crunching away at hitting your deadline and you can't let mistakes happen. Not only does assembly concurrency let you stop feeling like a micromanager with constant check-ins, but it also allows you to push final changes once everyone is done. You'll see these changes in a couple of ways. One, new avatars for who's in the design and in what external reference parts. But also, badges will appear in the Documents tab, Browser Entities, and the Data Panel. But it's a lot more than that, and we've created some assets for you to take a deep dive at your own pace. The description below has links to help and technical articles. Alright, now that the big news is out of the way, let me update you on some new tools you'll find in Fusion 360 this month. First up is Sketch Chamfer. Yep, it's here. Now you can add quick chamfers to a sketch. Use the Modify dropdown, and here you'll find three options, Equal Distance, Distance and Angle, and Two Distance, which is the same in the solid model environment. The Fillet tool saw some massive improvements last year, and now we're back with another good one. Previously, when you apply a fillet on an edge, the command will chain the edges where there is curvature created. If you went back a couple of steps and edited that fillet later, it wouldn't update the chained fillets. Now it does. The chain fillet will detect the new curves and chain them automatically. Look, joints are powerful. The way Fusion 360 uses them sets us apart from other software. Joints are what dictates kinematic relationships between two components in the 3D space. So think locking a vise into a position or associating a drawer with a slide. Joints are your friend, and you should use them whenever possible. But because we want you to like them, we've, of course, made them better. We've improved the joint glyph so that it indicates the three axes of 3D space. When you apply a joint origin on the component, you can quickly tell which direction the joint origin is facing. It's small, but when you're in a 40 part assembly, it makes all the difference. Pro tip, if you've no experience with joints, spend some time getting. If you've been using Fusion 360 for a while, you know you have to click in the model tree to navigate to where you wanna go. Not anymore. Now you can arrow up and down to navigate the tree and use the left and right keys to expand and minimize things like the tree's body's portion. Ever hear that term small but mighty? This is that. All right, I wanna end it on an improvement note. This has been asked for by quite a few of you. Now, when you create a name dimension, that name dimension parameter will be automatically added to the favorite section of the parameters dialog. With this improvement, you no longer have to have a treasure map to find what you're looking for. Our parametric tools in Fusion 360 are super powerful, and part of that is the ability to simplify the experience, which this does. Go out and parameterize everything. Okay, y'all, that's it for March's What's New. Don't forget to check out Assembly Concurrency Deep Dive and the new Possible podcast. We'll catch you next month.